Hey guys, welcome to the video. So uh, there's a few things, definitely a few things I want to talk about today. Um, number one, to all of my subscribers, uh, one, my Discord link is going to be in the description. That will be important later. And two, I do not want to be posting these videos to Reddit, I promise. Um, but Reddit is the only place that does not actively suppress new creators. So even though 80% of you guys are trash human beings, I need the views and I need the interaction. So even if you just want to come here and spam downvote my video because you're offended that I'm smarter than you, um, that still helps my channel. So if you were wondering why I keep doing it, that's why. But um, furthermore, so you have, um, so what I want to talk about today is kind of the issue with fetch lands and modern and kind of the, kind of the perspective towards them. So logically, from a reason and logic perspective, reprinting fetch lands and making them cheaper is not going to help modern. It's not going to make modern cheaper. But I think at this point, it's just what they need to do. It's just like whenever they ban a card, like, um, it's like, just like whenever they ban a card, like Aetherflux Reservoir, because the community is whining about it, even though Aetherflux Reservoir or Arkham's Astrolabe does not show an overly high win rate, the community is complaining about it, so they still have to get rid of it, even if there's no logical reason to do it. So a card like, uh, a card like Force of Will, for example. Force of Will, I think, is a card that just for posterity's sake, needs to be a five to ten dollar card, and I, I I own Force of Wills. I'm willing to take that hit on them, um, just because I really I would like more people to play Legacy. So I think um, and having like an essential game piece like that be uh, be almost a hundred dollars, I think is a very bad look for Legacy and really prohibits a lot of people from getting into it. And so you're, you're going to look at me and say, well, why is that not the same with Fetchlands? Well, there is a difference between literally the best counterspell that's ever been printed in the history of Magic the Gathering, the best counterspell by a gigantic margin that's ever been printed. There's a big difference between that and a land. So, and it's not like, it's not like we're talking about original dual lands, and even if we were, you know, we're, we're talking about a Fetchland. We're talking about a land that offers you a minute percentage chance of a minute percentage chance of lowering the amount of lands you draw in the future and fixing your mana in three to four color decks. And you do not have to play a fetch land. That is, that is the main thing here. So if I want to build a deck, right, I don't have to play fetch lands. Um, I can play any number of the other budget alternatives, right? So there is a difference. I would much rather... So if, if, we, if we take two examples, right? So let's take a legacy deck. Let's take out the four force of wills and replace them with four 20 cent counter spells. Not like a random counter spell, like the literal card counter spell, which is about a 20 cent card. If we replace the four force of wills with four counter spells, that deck's win rate is going to go down the drain. If I take Modern Storm and replace the four Scalding Tarns with four Sulfur Falls, the deck's win rate is going to stay almost exactly the same. And so that's the point that I'm making. But the reason that I think Fetchlands need to be reprinted at this point is there's just so much negativity and there's so much people just complaining and thinking that for some reason reprinting Fetchlands will make modern more affordable because it won't. But, um, you know, they, I think they just, they just need to do it. Like, I think, you know, make Fetchlands cheap, whatever, because... Right, so what what making fetchlands cheap, what making fetchlands absurdly cheap is going to do is it's going to push the prices of the actual game pieces up. So for me personally, I would much rather play with a Jace the Mind Sculptor than a Scalding Tarn. Like if I had to pick one of those cards to trade out for a two dollar budget alternative, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the Scalding Tarn. So I think um, I think what what people are missing here is if the all the fetchlands get reprinted and this um, you know this kind of uh, mass mass re-entry in the modern happens that's going to push the price of all the actual cards that people play with up and the price of even if the price of fetch lands is low so your average debt cost is not going to change it's just going to be whenever you're looking to make a budget alternative rather than being able to place a land replace a land that effectively will not change how your deck functions you're going to be looking at rather than doing that and rather than having that alternative available to you you're going to have to be trying to look for budget alternatives to the actual game pieces Whenever I first got into Modern, Path to Exile was a $12 to $15 card. I cannot tell you how bad that feels. It, like, the, how, how bad Path being a $15 card feels, that feels orders of magnitude worse than having to pay $15 for a fetch land. Like, because if I'm building a deck that plays white, and if, if I'm playing, if I'm playing blue-white control, for example, and blue-white control might be a little bit worse of an example now just because there is mystic sanctuary so the the blue base fetch lands do matter a little bit for that but um let, let's take let's take blue white control uh before the printing of mystic sanctuary right so if i had to choose if if um so if so so i'm looking at this deck right and so if path to exile is a 15 dollar card and flooded strand is a 15 dollar card 
and I have to not get either of those cards because they're out of my budget, that feels really bad. If I could pick between Flooded Strand and Path to Exile, if I could make one of those a $2 card, every time it's going to be Path to Exile, because Path to Exile is an essential game piece. Path to Exile is by far the best white removal spell in Modern. And you, there is, there is no, there is no replacement for it. If you want to replace a fetch land, you can replace it with any number of things. You can replace it with a horizon land. Those are all around five dollars. You can replace it with a buddy land. You can replace it with a tango land. Well, not not a tango land. <laughs> replacing it with a tango land might be a little rough. You can, um, you can replace it with a with a pain land. You can. You have all of these choices available to you, so I think it's just really disingenuous to say that you're not getting into modern because the price of fetch lands is pushing is pushing you out. But, um, so what ba basically, um, and here we're gonna get to where my Discord is. If you personally, if you are if you are subscribed to me or you are a new subscriber and you look at modern and you say I feel like I cannot get into modern because the price of fetch lands is too much or I cannot get into modern because I just I don't have the money for it, I want you to join my Discord, hit me up. I will take my own time and I will help you build a deck on your budget and I will and I will show you and I will kind of talk you through how you um how how you unbudget it. So I'm gonna say, okay, so you wanna get this card, this card, and this card, and then as time goes on and you replace things, you're gonna replace this with that and that with that and trade these for these. And I'm going to and, and I will take my own time and I will walk you through that because I think, I think it's really bad that all the negativity online makes people feel like they can't play modern. You should not look at a modern deck and think, man, I can't afford fetch land, so I can't play. That's absurd. Like, what? I played modern for a year and a half without fetch lands, and you know why? Because I, I was playing modern in the time before there was, I mean, it, it still existed, but I was playing modern, and I wasn't listening to all the negativity on the internet, and I wasn't listening to the to the brainlets on Reddit and all these people saying, saying like, oh, you absolutely need to be playing the tier one deck to have fun in modern, because that's just not the case it's just not um there is so there's math at the end of the video to prove my point about how meaningless fetch lines are and um what else okay so uh one, one more thing um, i'm going to talk about kind of one of the a deck building strategy you can use right so we're going to look at this modern deck that i have here this is the deck that i'm playing uh that, I, that i'm playing tonight but i wanted to i wanted to kind of prove a point with uh with how i built my mana base here so um, this is essentially this is a blue white control blue white control shell. Um, we're taking advantage of frantic inventory, and because frantic inventory offers just that like just raw card advantage, um, we uh, we really like those those little efficient spells. So I'm actually splashing red for a playset of lightning bolts in the main, and then um, and then a couple red sideboard cards. So what I've done with my mana base here is, um, so if you think Jeskai, right? So what what are the Jeskai control? What are those two petrons you think of? So you're obviously going to be playing a place at the Flooded Strand and then Scalding Tarn. That's what that's what you're thinking in your head, right? Well, if you notice, if you notice here, I'm not playing Scalding Tarn. I'm playing Polluted Delta. So rather than playing what is it, paying almost two hundred dollars for three Scalding Tarns for the deck, I'm uh, maybe paying eighty for three Polluted Deltas. And well. And I can tell you, there's zero difference for this deck. Well, why is there zero difference? Well, because I have built the mana base, so there is no difference between a Polluted Delta and a Scalding Tarn. There's no difference between a Scalding Tarn and a Misty Reinforced. And that is because all of my fetchable targets that I can get have blue in them. So I have the Ragran Trium, I have Steam Vents, I have, um, and I have Hollowed Fountain. And then, of course, Mystic Sanctuary Island. So... Um, polluted, so polluted delta and uh, polluted delta and scalding tarn can fetch the exact same number of my lands in my deck. Ergo, all but one. That one land that they cannot fetch is the single basic plane that is in my deck. That is just in there in case of blood moon or in case you know I need to. I do need to fetch out a basic planes because. Um, I do I do have the supreme verdicts in there. Um, so I've also uh, made a concerted effort to build my mana base in um, kind of kind of a smart way. So I I'm not playing any double red cards, which which lets me get away with only having two actual red sources in the deck. Um, and that in, unless you're unless you're playing in a meta where like literally everybody is playing uh, is is playing a pile of uh, pile of field of ruins, this will work out very well. But um, anyway, uh, that being said, I just want to kind of show you like how you can kind of think about and design your mana bases like intelligently. But and now I'm going to show you the math on how pointless fetch lands are in general. And keep in mind, this does not actually apply to control decks because Mystic Sanctuary is a stupid card, and Mystic Sanctuary helps fetch lands a lot. But any deck that's not a control deck, there you go. 
So I found a calculator that has um, has parentheses that it lets me use, which is uh, which is important for the numbers that we're doing. So uh, we're going to set this up. You have a 60 card deck, 24 lands. You've drawn a seven card hand. There are three lands in that hand. All of them are non fetch land lands. So from that point, um, and we're we're gonna do, we're gonna go over the first three turns. So you make a land drop each turn. So um, there are fifty three cards left in your deck, and then twenty one of them, are, and then twenty one of them are twenty one of them are lands. So um, it's going to be this is twenty one. Where's my divide? Here we go. Divided by fifty three. Oops, I need to close the parentheses. Uh, 21 divided by 53 plus 20 divided by 52. Close the print. Oops, I closed the wrong parentheses. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. There we go. Um, plus parentheses 19 divided by 51. And if I've done this correctly, if I've done this correctly, yes. So um, you will see that in this math, in this example, um, where we we are using all we are using all non land lands, your odds of drawing a land in your first three turns are one point one five three three. So now we're going to change this number and assume that you're using fetch lands. So we're going to take it from assuming all of them are non-fetch lands to we're going to assume that all of them are fetch lands. So basically what, what that means for the math um, is for each of these, each of these two numbers are going to go down by one. So it'll be 20 instances, or no, no, the first one, I'm sorry, the first one will stay the same, right? Because no... No, we're, we're talking about your draws, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be 20 and 52. It'll be 19 and 51. And it will be 18 in 50. Oops, not 118 and 50. Oh, Lord, that changes the number. Okay. So what, what, does, what does this number mean? So do you remember what the first number was? It was 1.1533. Really, really hope I remember what the first number was. Um, but yeah, so, so what, what that leads you to is um, you can see it is almost exactly in a, in a standard, uh, standard base deck. It is about exactly, you are 4% more likely to draw a land in your, first, uh, in your first three, in your first three draw phases if you are... If you are, uh, if you are, if you are not using fetch lands, and this number can either help or hurt you, because honestly, in some cases, if you're playing a 24 land deck, you want to you want to draw more lands. Sometimes you don't, sometimes you do. That's just the math. Also, the math changes if you're on the draw or on the play, because sometimes you haven't already pulled the land out of your deck. So in this example, this is for a player that is on the play. But if they were on the draw, each of those numbers would be would be up by one. Um, if, if you take a more reasonable example, which is assuming like one of the lands is like a fast land and then you have two shocks, um, or two fetches rather. So that would be something like this. So in, in a reasonable hand, in a hand where you have like the normal, the normal distribution of, of regular lands and fetch lands and pretty much any modern mana base, your odds of drawing a land are going to be about one point one three in your first three draw phases if you are using non-fetch lands that number jumps up to about 1.15 so I, I i said everything right i said all the numbers right yeah you can see it on the screen so if i said something dumb don't blame me but yeah so 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 that's the difference if you're using non-fetch lands versus fetch lands that's the difference you're looking at and i think looking at a 2% difference that might even not be negative is a really, really dumb reason to say you can't play modern. That's all, folks.